things. It's uh, now oxygen, oxygen and sunlight. So keep your tires in a dark, dark place. Um, low to no humidity within a certain heat range would always be nice. Like, you know, what's, what, what's perfectly comfortable for you is going to be perfectly comfortable for the tires. Um, so if there's a garage space uh, out there that you could tuck these tires in. And then the only other advice I have is, is uh, saran wrap. You can go to any Home Depot or any U-Haul and buy these little rolls of, of saran wrap have a handle on them and you can wrap your tires up and this is this was very popular when uh jason you remember this when we had really hard tires i'm talking like bridgestone yds tires um, <laughs> i remember why uh, yeah <laughs> yeah ybn and yds that's why i came in on the last year my first year in karting in northern california first lap was at prairie city by the way um and the first year, they were phasing out the YBN and coming in with the YDS, and it was all a tire doping game. How soft can you get these tires if you get them right on that durometer limit, or whatever it was, 56 points, uh, 54 points, whatever it was, and it was a new art to, 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 to soften these tires to the minimum level. Because it, um, it was illegal at the time, um, but it was one of those things uh, out of sight, out of mind, and if it passes durometers, uh, durometer readings, then you're legal. It was so, called doping. Uh, what every dri- doping, and what all the drivers did was they. Yeah. You're right. They, and it didn't they, involve they would the rush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was in, involved in it too, and um, I thought it was actually one of the greatest uh, learning experiences of my life. To in karting is to learn how to manage tires and preserve stuff. I was a low budget guy, um, and I thought I benefited greatly from being a low budget guy. Believe it or not, because I learned every everything about go-karting from start to finish like um i think like some of the best racers are out there in go-karting are racers you can drop off at a track with nothing but you know roll a duct tape and a and a crescent wrench and then try to drive a go-kart uh you know in a race and there's there's people that can do that just they just learn so much and i thought i benefited a lot from a lot of racers the leesman family uh mamel gidley i've I've held yourself jason when i came up um, you know, I'd been, I was just learning. I was very enthusiastic about uh, absorbing as much as I could. So, um, but with this tire preservation on these hard tires and the Yamaha classes and the shifter classes, you know, when you got those tires soft enough and, it, and you're done for the race, they don't put those tires back in the trailer just like they are, just like you do with the, the soft and Vicos or the soft Bridgestone. Um, you don't, you don't, that doesn't happen. It's soft MG. People just like, okay, we're just going to throw them in the trailer. Well, with those hard tires, since we were going to run them all year long, one set of tires, believe it or not, all year long. I think with the Yamaha, that was true. I'm not sure about the shifter, Jason. But as far as uh, the YDS, you'd wrap them up in saran wrap, and whatever chemicals were in there would stay with the tire. And when the tires are manufactured at the factory, they have chemicals in them already. And if those chemicals seep out, the tire is just dried rubber. So you're going to have a very inconsistent handling tire, um, and likely to be quite hard and low in grip. So saran wrap your tires, do you, uh, take the air out, um, that, that helps too. So the tires are less stretched and wrap them up, put them in a dark place and they'll last a bit longer for you. Perfect. Thank you for that tip. And, um, uh, you know, let's, a, a lot of racers in NorCal probably have no idea who you are. Um, so give your give your racing career, plug your resume here for a second. I mean you're you're actually a pretty accomplished carter. I've done a few go kart races in in my years, and um, when I was I don't know I was young five six years old, I always wanted to race. I grew up on NASCAR. I know don't I don't want anyone throwing up in their mouth, but I think it's a it's a it was a great sport to watch when I was a kid when I didn't know anything about racing. They'd always come out. They have the cut out for the cars they explained things in the pits was, i was so enthralled with it and i always wanted to race i had no idea go-karts existed i had very little knowledge about open wheel racing and when i got into when i got into high school my pretty much my senior year i wanted to do an internship over at at the time it was called Sears point raceway with mcgee motorsports and scott rubin um who was next to steve cameron and mamel gidley and, and they, have, they, have, they have buddy rice also um, at the time of racing Atlantics at the time. So it was just like this whole go-kart race car connected thing that I got dropped into in high school. And in the back of the shop, they had a go-kart. 
stacked up against the wall. It's a little crusty thing still to this day. No one knew who made the go kart, where my tractor actually came from. But um, my trade off was is I'll work underneath the race cars and clean up all the blown engine oil and tra- blown transmission oil, and you let me drive your go kart for free. And um, my first trip took that go kart out to Prairie City with a couple of uh, fellow racers. Saw the carts go around the corner. It's like, there's no way I can go that fast. There's no way that's possible. And then, uh, I don't know, it had to have been about first or second lap. I was pretty hooked. Um, I think that was 1999, 2000, I started. And from then on, I just took to it like a duck to water. I've raced, I skipped to 2005. Uh, I was a, 2005 was the Rotax National uh, Senior Champion. Um, at that time in road tax classes, they had anywhere between 50 and 70 drivers in, in, their, in their respective classes, especially senior and junior. So it was really competitive and really, really fun. Really enjoyed it. Um, one at South Bend, South Bend out there in uh, Michigan and Raceway Park with Gary Lobos track. And um, after that championship, started to get a little bit more noticed. Um, by the importers, and I raced with SSC Racing uh, for, for a while. I raced with, uh, I spent quite a few years with uh, Burrell and MRP Motorsport with Gary Lobaugh, Tim and Chris. Uh, they're a great bunch of people, and also Andy Seisman. Um, he was he was dealing with Burrell. I actually raced under uh, Andy Seisman's uh, full throttle karting uh, for a while, too, winning his uh, Challenge of the Americas two years, I think it was two years in a row, I think it was two years. I don't know what years they were, but I've, that afforded me the ability to race in Europe. Um, after after winning that championship with with Andy, I got to go overseas. I raced in Italy, Portugal, um, France. I've raced in Austria, uh, pretty much all over Europe, and that gave me an, a whole new new passion for racing. I came back and understood that there's a there there is a difference between European racing and, and American racing. I think this is a simple difference is that uh, in, in, in Europe, uh, racing is more of a religion and uh, on the whole. And, and, and in the U.S., it's still kind of on that cusp of being a hobby, you know, because you've got kids can play football, kids can play basketball, baseball. We've got so many different sports. In Europe, it's a little bit more limited in terms of major sports. And if you've got the funds to go racing, then that's what people do. So um, I brought some of that efficiency and knowledge back with me and, and also discretion because what will earn you a handshake in Europe will get you kicked out of a racetrack in America. So <laughs> I was very mindful of that. Get, get, we're very mindful of that getting back and, and being as fly as I could. I didn't get into too much trouble and, um, you know, race the Florida winter tour, Jones Americas, national championships, pro, uh, Scusa pro tour, Scusa super nationals. Um, been a lot of races and won a lot of races, um, and but I think my single largest uh, pride and joy in this sport is seeing some of the people I've worked with win races. Um, when in 2004, 2003, I started coaching right away. I got a job with the Jim Russell Racing School, and then it, that that track up up at um, Sears Point, brand new at the time worked out of a couple of metal containers uh, in the mud. We had, a, I think it was like 60 or 70 go-kart fleet, from shifters to cadets to tags to air cool engines, you name it, all track magic. And I instructed there every single day uh, for like three or four years. And um, that, I think it started with them in 2002. And after I kind of got my my chops up to be able to communicate with, with drivers because I think we saw um, our average was about 50,000 new drivers every year going through Sears Point Raceway, the go-kart track, that is. So 50,000 new exposed for people who have never experienced go-karts. So that's a pretty significant number uh, not to frown on. So um, while Sears Point might have a myriad of issues with scheduling or pricing or, or whatever that is, a lot of people um, – have some issues with that track. Um, it was pretty beneficial in getting a whole new uh, wave of momentum of go karts getting into NorCal. So um, I transitioned from that to racing directly for the importer at 
at MRP, uh, racing nationally, and then um, came down to Florida every winter for the Florida Winter Tour to work and race. And what's interesting was I went to a track in Palmetto, Florida, and this track was a go-kart track, but it also housed a full Mazda, at the time Mazda Road to Indy program, so USF 2000, Formula Mazda, and then uh, Indy Lights. They had this whole program there, um, full teams, very, very high-activity track, and go-karts were kind of an afterthought, and they were just saying, well, well, let's get a dealership, let's try to put something together um, and have a little racing team for go-karts as well. And that's when one of their... Uh, Indy Lights driver, his name was J.R. Hildebrand at the time, kind of dropped my name and spoke about my experience and my accomplishments with uh, within the industry. And the owner of the company, Dan Anderson, called the meeting and said, what do you think? And um, one of his questions was, hey, can you make can you make a lot of money running a racing team in, in go-karting? I thought it was a pretty funny answer. And I said, no, there's no way we could really make, we can break even after a few years, and and and, but the, the the big money generator was the track at Palmetto, and he hired me. So I said, "We're not going to make any money." And he wanted to tr- wanted the team so bad, he still hired me. So I moved to Florida and started doing driver development, and pretty much got keys to the kingdom on what I wanted to do. And one of the things I wanted to do was create racing camps for for kids between the ages of I'd say about eight years old and. 15 and 16, right around there. That's uh, where they can learn valuable passing skills, driver development skills, physical fitness, uh, mechanical uh, operation of the cart, or get the drivers involved touching the go kart. That's that's what I really enjoyed seeing these drivers uh, grow up. So now that I've done that for quite a few years, um, you know, I've got dri- drivers who have driven in Formula One. IndyCar, obviously Indy Lights and all the feeder series thereof. Um, now I have a new passion just with these with these tires because I saw I saw a need and I saw I could help drivers get to the track for a much more affordable price and now that's that's my main my main motivation for these years to come is to the ultimate goal for retire is to have no tire go to a landfill ever again. All tires get captured, whether they're going to be repurposed and sold to customers who have a dire need for them to put some laps down at the track, or if they're just no good at all and we, we shred them, recycle them, um, we, we, could turn, we could turn them in and melt them down, turn them into different things. We could turn them into um, mats, catch mats for the drivers when, we get to the, when you get to the track. A lot of track owners complain about stains on their asphalt. We could make these mats um, out of the recycled rubber that you drove probably months before, and now that that rubber is catching and preventing chemicals from getting into the ground at the racetrack. So yeah, I, I don't think um, a lot of racers again, really I, pay attention to how destructive racing chemicals, um, especially gasoline, and how destructive it can be to asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and I, you know, I, I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was. I was the, one of those racers too. Didn't when I was racing, I didn't really care. It's all about you know, you got to get to the track. You've got to get set up. You got to get testing. You got to fix all the issues that you have, and then you got to pack up and go home as quickly as possible to get ready for the next next time you go to the track or the next event. So, with that said, um, you know, I think this is. Just, 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 just put this damn mat down and have it catch your crap. And then after a few months, you're going to give it back to retire and we're going to find another purpose for it. So um, ultimately, everything's going to end up in some type of landscaping or some, some type of public area um, where it can have a, have a permanent home. Um, the, the shredded rubber is a great substitute for, for bark, for instance. Um, in playgrounds and in uh, common areas, center islands, now, rather than doing, you know, grass, high-maintenance grass or bark, uh, people will put these rubber, these, these rubber chips down, and they'll actually, they'll actually, they can actually coat them. They can turn them brown, they can turn them green, blue, keep them black, so they can also be decorative. So, you know, there's, there's 
real permanent solutions. There's 